The long-term effects of COVID are unknown, but there is some hope for long haulers. Now with me is Lisa Conti, the founder and CEO of Jaguar Health and Napa Pharmaceuticals, which has established a wholly owned subsidiary in Italy named Napo EU, and Josh Mailman, the founding sponsor of Dragon SPAC, which is identified Napo EU as a target company for listing in Italy. Now Napo has a very interesting plant-based product, my Tessie approved for HIV related diarrhea. And in our previous segments, we've discussed the company's investigation into development of the product for potential use in COVID patients, specifically in Europe. So uh, Lisa, let's start with you. Now I understand that as of March 15th, about a month ago, Napo EU is officially incorporated in Italy. So can you tell me a little bit about what's been going on at Napo EU? Yeah, and Jane, thanks for having us back. It's wonderful to see you again and to talk about the progress that we've been making at Napo EU and very specifically with crofelomer. Crofelomer is the active ingredient in my Tessie and it is being licensed from Napo in the US to Napo EU for an initial indication, development for an initial indication of COVID related diarrhea. Um, the progress that we've made is that we've now had a meeting. We've met with National uh, Regulatory Drug Regulatory Authority, and we were able to have agreement that COVID-related diarrhea, and in particular in an acute patient population, is an unmet medical need, which means we qualify now for a conditional approval pathway by the EMA, an accelerated approval pathway, an accelerated clinical program. And that's it was sort of a go, no go situation for the business plan, the business model of Napo EU. So we're now moving forward. They asked for us to provide a protocol synopsis, which we provided for an accelerated clinical program. We have agreement also that the patients can be included outside of the EU. So you think about the pandemic that's raging in India, that's raging in Brazil. So for rapid patient enrollment, they also agreed that we don't need to have a comparator. This will be placebo control, which is an indication that opioids, the risk of constipation from opioids are not considered suitable for this situation. And then finally, there was a bit of a gift, which is they unsolicited brought up that we could take the package that we have for approval in the United States. My Tessie is approved in the United States for HIV related diarrhea that also could be submitted under a conditional approval pathway without additional clinical work. So we now have a pathway for our business plan to potentially have approval of crofelomer in Europe by the end of 2022. And of course, subsequent to that, the patient benefit that can come from that. Sure, now as the pandemic and vaccinations progress, how does that affect the patient population? So we have the acute patient population, which is you know, still popping up with waves, third, fourth waves, whatever wave we're in, in certain areas of Europe, certain states within the United States, of course, as I mentioned, India, Brazil, other South American countries, and that's the acute situation. And then we have the long hauler situation. And the numbers are still emerging here. This is a syndrome that is still trying to be defined. It's a constellation of symptoms which include gastrointestinal issues, the most common of which is diarrhea, the brain fog that you've heard about, the fatigue, arthritis type symptoms. It's still unknown exactly what this is all about. It looks like an, uh, an overreaction of the immune system, a dysregulation of the sympathetic nervous system is what has been reported recently. But when you think about the numbers, 25% is the number that is batted around on the low end of number of people in the world who have been, in, or in Europe, who have been infected with COVID. Um, the numbers are about 30% will be dealing with long hauler. About 30% of those will be dealing with GI symptoms of which diarrhea is the most prominent. So you put all that together, you're talking about 50 to 100 million people just in Europe who could be dealing with long hauler symptoms. And we don't know at this point how long long hauler is. So we're, in there for the long haul. It should be said though, Napo EU will have the opportunity to develop all indications of crofelomer. So it's within its, its business model to take that opportunity on for other indications as well. 
Now, does Napo EU operate independently? So at this moment, where it's, we're incorporated, uh, it's still run by Jaguar, which wholly owns Napo EU. Napo EU will be standalone. So we are in the process of three key hires, medical regulatory and a, and a chief, uh, basically a president, a managing director. We've brought in um, marketing consultants to help us with the sequencing and prepare to launch the product, which would presumably could be at the very end of 2022, if all goes well with the conditional approval pathway. So it will operate on its own. And we would expect to have funding about the time that we're starting clinical trials, hopefully from the pathway that we're working with, with a SPAC, where we are the named target of a European SPAC and do have a memorandum of understanding there. So Josh, I think that transitions nicely to you. So can you explain your role in this with Dragon SPAC? Yeah, um, basically, um, yeah, I have known um, uh, Jaguar Health and been involved for many years. Uh, and the opportunity emerged to uh, effectively create a new entity in Europe, um, which is not an uncomplicated process. And it has certainly been complicated by the fact that we're, we've been in the middle of COVID. Everything has slowed down, uh, as uh, many of us have seen in from uh, construction to uh, uh, getting uh, SPACs off the ground. Um, the SPAC um, world is new to Europe. Um, um, so it, uh, it's kind of following on uh, much of the work that's uh, gone on here. Um, um, but, um, you know, we've been proceeding um, apace. Um, we hope that everything will be together um, and we are, will be ready to go by um, before the uh, vacation period begins in Italy. Um, we have a lot of interested um, investors um, in the Dragons, in Dragons back, um, some of whom have history with the company, uh, some of whom have relationships with Italy. Um, and um, so we're very enthusiastic about um, moving forward. And uh, I'm uh, fully um, supportive of the, as a sponsor, of the Dragon SPAC, and um, we're excited to to uh, get get um, get in the market. How are you feeling about the timing of the transaction? Um, you know, I think. Well, what I should say is, I think uh, hopefully by uh, you know the end of June, we we would hope to be in the market. Um, there's certainly, um, again, as I said, these things are take more time than you think, but um, I think that's a pretty good estimate from where we are right now. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with, with paperwork and bureaucracy. Yeah, I, I can only imagine the complications. So thank you. And, and Lisa and Josh, I hope you come back um, when this actually you know, comes to fruition and we can get an update. That would be great. You got it. Of course, we, we're, we're we'll be happy to. Thank you. Thanks, Jane.